So 2022 is looking to be quite the stacked year for movies indeed, what with cinemas hoping to enjoy a massive rebound as they unleash a huge slate of blockbusters for hungry audiences to gorge on. But here's the thing, I'm a betting man, I like to make predictions and just see if they come true, so what I've decided to do today is try and guess how the biggest movies of 2022 are actually going to end. If I'm right, fantastic, I mean just add it to the collection, and if I'm wrong, bah, again add it to the bloody pile. So let's take a look at them as I'm Jules, this is what culture.com and this is predicting how 2022's biggest movies will end. Thor, Love and Thunder, Valkyrie has an epic wedding. Now, despite the major casting announcements, we still know so, so very little about Thor Love and Thunder's actual narrative, with just a few months to go until it's meant to hit cinemas. But back before shooting even started, star Tessa Thompson confirmed that Valkyrie's first order of business as the new ruler of Asgard would be to find herself a queen. This is presumably what the love part of the movie's title will refer to, as well as possibly resolving Thor and Jane Foster's former romance. And producer Big Kev has also confirmed that this will indeed be part of the movie's plot. While it's easy to be rather cynical about Disney's LGBTQ representation given the superficial lip service that they've given to it to date, it does seem like they're committed to giving Valkyrie a wife by the time that Love and Thunder comes to a close. And wouldn't it be awesome to see the movie end with an epic Asgardian wedding between Valkyrie and her new love? An exuberant wedding on New Asgard featuring all of the surviving characters would surely end Love and Thunder on a euphoric high while finally injecting some meaningful gay representation into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. As for who the Queen might be, well, the possibilities are actually quite endless. Either an existing character like Jane or Sif, or more likely someone entirely new that we haven't even met yet. The Batman – The Riddler Kills Alfred because Matt Reeves is, 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 is the Batman has been extensively test screened over the last few months, we've been drip fed morsels of information about the movie's dark detective story, and one rumour that keeps popping up is that this film has a rather downcast and provocative ending. And really, what could be more daring than killing off Bruce Wayne's trusty butler Alfred? Alfred hasn't ever died in the live-action Batman movies, always remaining on board as Bruce's mainstay confidant. But having Alfred be murdered by the Riddler in the film's climax would be a jaw-dropping way to totally upend expectations about a new franchise moving forward. Regardless of what happens to the Riddler, most likely either being captured or escaping, ripping Bruce's lifeline away from him for the rest of the proposed trilogy would be an ingenious and surprising way to build hype for the inevitable sequel. Now, it would be sure to piss a lot of Bat fans off, especially as Andy Serkis seems like such a great fit for Alfred, but sometimes there are more important things than just giving people what they think they want. Creed 3 – Adonis Retires From Boxing Now, there's a very reasonable argument to be made that Creed 2 probably should have been the last of all of the Rocky movies. It provided fitting story conclusions for Adonis Creed, Rocky Balboa, and even Ivan Drago and his son Victor. But Hollywood loves few things more than trilogies, and so a third Creed film is due to start shooting, with rumours swirling that it will revolve around Donny taking on the son of Clubber Lang, reportedly being played by Jonathan Majors. Creed 2 was very much concerned with Donny's inability to juggle a family life with his in-ring career, and while it seemed to end by resolving that, one suspects that this thread will continue to be pulled in Creed 3. When we meet back up with Donny, he will presumably be married to Bianca, and that their daughter Amara will be a few years old, and so Donny will need to weigh up whether he really wants to continue a career where he risks not being around for his child, as of course what happened with his own father Apollo. Now while there's obviously the cynical temptation to just milk the Creed franchise for five or six entries like Rocky did, the boldest thing that it could do is the total opposite. End Creed 3 with Donny winning the fight but vacating the title afterwards and hanging up the boxing gloves. After all, with Donny presumably in his mid-thirties by the time the movie takes place, he's approaching the age at which most professional boxers retire. The Flash the DCEU gets a soft reboot. Now, there's been a lot of speculation in recent months about what the upcoming Flash solo movie might mean for the future of the DC Extended Universe, especially with its narrative revolving around both time travel and the multiverse. We know that this will result in Michael Keaton's classic Bruce Wayne slash Batman making an appearance, but one of the most popular fan theories during the rounds is that Warner Brothers will effectively use this film to give the DCEU a soft reboot of sorts. With the franchise basically, well, being a total mess at this point, the Flash could give the universe a course correct by having Barry Allen 
Allen rewrite history, in turn erasing the more divisive and contentious DCEU films from the continuity altogether. This vibes with rumours that The Flash may end by banishing the Zack Snyder DCEU films to their own separate continuity, cutting Affleck's Batman and Henry Cavill's Superman out of the picture entirely. This would allow the franchise to restart with The Flash, Shazam, Aquaman and Wonder Woman, leading a new version of the Justice League. It would certainly be an extreme move and one sure to be met with its fair share of vitriol from fans who are already incensed by the frankly plausible rumours. Even if it's not as radical a reset as the scuttlebutt suggests, there's really no better time for the DCEU to get a soft reboot than in a movie explicitly centred around time travel and alternate universes. Morbius – It's gonna set up the Sinister Six Now it's tough to know what to make of Sony's Spider-Man universe at present. Venom Let There Be Carnage and Spider-Man No Way Home both teased possible future interactions between Venom and Spider-Man, but will they actually ever go anywhere? Expect to see more of this speculative hyping up in the upcoming Morbius, which we know will feature a supporting appearance from Adrian Toomes aka Vulture. Fans have been theorising for a good while that this film may hint at the formation of the Sinister Six, and that feels like precisely the sort of sequel bait that we'd see at the very end of the movie, perhaps even as a post credit scene. With Morbius star Jared Leto recently hinting that the Sinister Six film may be on the cars, having Vulture connect with Morbius, Venom and even some of the MCU's villains at the end of this film would be an awesome way to lay the groundwork and get fans talking. Halloween Ends – Laurie and Michael Die Halloween Ends is, from its title upwards, being sold as the air quotes final entry into the original Halloween saga. I mean, it's definitely not going to be the last Halloween film ever, we all know that, but it will be the final one featuring this iteration of Michael Myers and Laurie Strode. Despite how generally disappointing it was, Halloween Kills certainly ended on a compelling, if rather predictable, sequel hook, with Laurie's daughter Karen being murdered by Michael Myers. Now, this is going to be an emotionally charged threequel as Laurie and her granddaughter team up to take Michael down once and for all. And while this new trilogy of movies mercifully brought her back from the dead following her infuriating demise in the now decanonized Halloween resurrection, it's tough to imagine Halloween ends wrapping up with Laurie in one piece. For one thing, audiences have seen Laurie prevail over Michael so many times only for him to come back, so much so that they just won't believe it again. If Laurie does go down with Michael, leaving her granddaughter as the last remaining member of the bloodline, then that might just actually stick. It'd be tremendously sad, of course, but a fitting outcome for two of the most elemental and iconic characters in all of horror. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, Strange is going to be put on ice. Now, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness is undoubtedly one of the MCU's most exciting and ambitious upcoming projects, as the multiverse gets cracked open even wider by the good old Doctor and he's forced to contend with, among other threats, an evil alternate version of himself. The film's first trailer has Baron Mordo tell Strange that he is the greatest threat to our universe, and it seems that much of the movie will revolve around the dangerous potential of his magical powers, as he previously demonstrated so catastrophically in Spider-Man No Way Home. Now, one suspects that the film won't have a massively happy ending, forcing Strange to team with Scarlet Witch in order to clean up his mess, perhaps before then realising that he might need to be put on ice for the foreseeable future. Though the multiverse clearly isn't going anywhere throughout Phase 4, there will be a clear effort by the heroes to mitigate the damage caused by Strange breaking it open, and it may be decided that it's best if Strange himself isn't around for a while, so don't be surprised if Strange, whether voluntarily or not, ends up exiled to a pocket dimension while Wanda and company tidy things up. If nothing else, it'd be a convenient way to lock Strange away for a few years given that the character isn't currently slated to appear in any upcoming MCU movies. While a third Doctor Strange film is inevitable sometime in the future, providing a reason for Strange's probable MCU absence over the next few years is a very smart call. Uncharted – Sully is gonna get his moustache the Uncharted movie adaptation may not look particularly good, but it's clearly angling to become a hit franchise and will obviously leave a few breadcrumbs intended to set up a proposed sequel. Now, Many fans have complained about the casting of Mark Wahlberg as Nathan Drake's mentor Sully, namely that he doesn't appear to rock the character's iconic bushy moustache for most of the movie. However, the most recent trailer did reveal our first glimpse at the Tash, with Sully showing up to rescue Nate while touting the distinctive facial hair. That said, fans shouldn't expect to see Wahlberg with this moustache for long, as given his clean-shaven appearance in every other scene shown, this is almost certainly the final scene in the film, or even a post credit scene. This feels reminiscent of the most recent Tomb Raider film, where the trailer showed Lara Croft getting her iconic dual pistols in a beat which most fans correctly guess would ultimately be a credits tag. 
Sully's mustache cameo has the exact same sequel baiting energy, so it's probably going to be where the movie ends. M'Baku becomes the new Black Panther. Black Panther Wakanda forever. Since Chadwick Boseman's untimely death in 2020, there's been intense speculation about the impact it will have on the now-shooting Black Panther sequel, Wakanda Forever. Now, fans are naturally wondering who will succeed Boseman's T'Challa as the new Black Panther, and while persistent rumours suggest that his sister Shuri will take up the mantle for most of the movie, that doesn't mean that she's going to be the permanent fixture from this point on. Given the actress's noted anti-vaccine remarks, there's been hope from a lot of fans that she'll simply play the part of the transitional Black Panther before the film sets up a more appealing successor, namely T'Challa's former lover or the leader M'Baku. Both would be fitting choices, and there have been rumblings in recent months that the film may indeed end with M'Baku taking on the title of Black Panther. Given his sheer might and deceptive charm, M'Baku would certainly be a fine fit to follow in T'Challa's footsteps. And considering the extremely unfortunate nature of the production, it's basically a best-case scenario moving forward. And there we go, my friends. That was predicting how 2022's biggest movies will end. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice where I do all of my streaming outside of work and it'd be great to see you over there, my friends. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. I hope you're treating yourself well, mentally and physically, my friends, because at the end of the day, that is all I care about. I just want you to go out there and realize that you are a massive ledge and you deserve all of the best things in life. And you're treating yourself with that self-love and respect that is so very important in order to achieve those things. Now go out there, my friend, and absolutely smash it. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.